G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Thursday morning here in Australia, market finally back over $2.7 trillion, but will it last? Uh, we've got up here a few times, dipped under, gone over, sort of been all over the place. So we're waiting to see, but we are getting late in the week already. And traditionally on a weekend, there's a bit of a pullback, not always. Sometimes it changes and we don't do well during the week and we pump really hard on weekends. But if you can kind of pick up the patterns and get on them early enough, you can find out when the best places are to kind of buy and sell. Again, it does move around. It doesn't stay in any one kind of pattern for too long, but it generally does stay in a pattern for a little while. So if you can identify those, there's definitely opportunities there. Again, I'll just start off uh, this video after saying that by saying that I'm never offering you financial advice, though, because I'm not a financial advisor. But you go back through the charts and you'll be able to see that there are definitely patterns, but they don't last very long. So you really need to be able to identify them quickly and then you can take advantage of them. And that's more for sort of traders, but even investors can do the same because you can see when the worst time during the week is to buy because when it's at its highest and when the best time during the week is to buy when it's at its lowest. And again, it will change from time to time. There's gen it's generally though, you sort of buy Monday, sell Thursday thereabouts uh, and rebuy back in Monday uh, and you can get you know better deals and there's some sort of arbitrage advantages to be made there. But again, just be careful that's not financial advice and it doesn't last forever. Uh, it runs in cycles. But anyway, let's move on. There we go. We just dropped under 2.7 trillion right as we were talking. All right, Bitcoin dominance. So look at that under 40 percent now so are we getting ready for a really super explosive altcoin season are we going to run into this you know huge parabar parabolic sort of you know december that everyone's expecting yeah maybe we'll have to wait and see i'm not still i'm still not completely sold on it but i'm not saying it can't happen i'm just not sold on it all right volume is down a little bit so quite substantially again bitcoin price it's because it got up to near 58 59 thousand again and now we're back down again and there's something interesting happening in the charts we'll ha have a look at and gas prices come way down from the other day i think this was like 24 dollars for a basic uh eth transaction now it's down to 13 that's still high but not as high as what it's been before all right, let's have a look at the market. Bit of a mixed bag. Something's doing well, something's doing not. So what's been the best performer in the last 24 hours? There we go. Clayton Polygon. I got some news about it. Again, I was banging on the table for ages. And this got down to like $1.50, I think $1.40, something like that. I said, don't sleep on it. Yes, it's going sideways. It's going to make its way back up. And here we are. Now, does this mean it's going to break into new all-time highs? No. But it's already starting to make its way back up to its old all-time high, which is good. So, you know, take advantages of the dips on really good projects. Voyager making a move. It's been doing well, up to $4. We'll have to wait and see, you know. Again, this was in the red, though, the other day, and Polygon will possibly be in the red in the next few days. They don't just simply stay in the green and constantly go up. There's going to be, you know, again, let's say it goes up 10% in three days. Expect it to lose maybe a third to half of that in the next 24, 48 hours after that. And then ex you can, again, not expect because, you know, nothing's guaranteed in life, but it'll basically probably start to go back up again if it's in an upward trend. So it's up and then, you know, whatever it goes up percentage wise, then lose maybe a third to even two thirds sometimes. And then it starts to go up again. It's not just straight up though. It can be quite volatile. So if you've got a good project you like, wait for dips, buy in on dips. And, you know, Polygon for me, when it was down at about, I think, $1.40, $1.30, was still a, a decent buy, not a great buy. A great buy was last year back in March when you could pick it up for literally two cents, three cents. It's basically done a 100x. Now it'll be more 100x for the three cent move at $3, but for $2, it was over. It was like $2.20 or something like that. So a 100x move. That means you put $1,000 into Matic at two cents, and it's you know now trading around $2. You've made $100,000. That is crazy kind of money. So imagine people that put 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars into Matic at two, three cents. Uh, they'd be doing quite well. But anyway, we got some nice moves. No double digit gains. Oh, there we go. Sorry, Clay just went double digit there. Uh, but some nice single digit gains. And you'll take any kind of gain over a loss any day. But again, we've got a market that's traveling kind of sideways. 
All right, so flip side of the coin, what hasn't done so well? Not what's down today. So safe moon, uh, well down. Uh, super volatile, but I mean, you know, they say volatility is your friend. I don't know whether safe moon's your friend, but you make your own mind up. Mutable X come down quite a bit. Shiba Inu coming down again. We saw that story that Shiba Inu whales, I mean, you know, bought billions of dollars worth the other day. But again, it doesn't mean these things just go straight up. You know, crypto is volatile full stop. So remember that. Wax is down. Again, I bought some wax and I'm getting hammered by it now. But I still like it long term and I just wanted to get a position. Uh, you know, I accept that I may lose sort of 20 to 30% on it. and may lose it all, uh, in all fairness. Maybe wax suddenly doesn't turn out to be the greatest thing ever uh, and goes to zero. And again, I'm not trying to fight it. Not saying that's what's going to happen. But if it does, I haven't bet the whole farm on it. But I am going to continue to buy the dip because I like wax and what they're all about. Uh, very cheap space for NFTs and things like that. Same as Sandbox. I had to get a position. I had a chance to get in super early, but I just didn't. Uh, and I'm regretting it. So now I've got a position in Sandbox. Uh, and again, looking to buy dips because I really want to do have a nice diverse portfolio across all the sectors within cryptocurrency. Now, I have got some shares as well. I bought some shares the other day. I participated in the token metrics uh, sort of crowdfunding thing. Uh, so I got a few shares there. Uh, there are some other shares I'm going to look to buy, things like MicroStrategy, Google and that. But they just, they're not offering the returns that you can get in cryptocurrencies at the moment. And I will take some of those profits and put them into shares, which are more stable. But yeah, cryptocurrencies is where the best gains are to be made. Uh, but look, you know, again, be very careful because when it turns around, it turns around quickly. You do need to be ready to take some profits at appropriate times. Anyway, look, only a couple of double digit losses and then, you know, back into single digit losses. So again, really a stagnant market, just trading sideways again, down 0.5% uh, overall. Now the Bitcoin chart, this is something that I, you know, I, it's been playing out like this. But now, is this getting ready to change? These are big accumulation uh, distribution phases kind of playing out, playing over in shorter times. But look at this. Here's our high, lower high. People are getting a little bit bullish, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. You know, we get just to here, it's just under, and this is starting to roll over. So I still think there's going to be a good chance to buy Bitcoin down around this $53,000 mark, particularly over this weekend. And I'm still not sold that this bearish, you know, kind of move isn't over. Again, like I said, there were cycles. So basically this played out, and now this is basically played out again. Now, is this the bottom, I hear, we're about to bounce, come over, roll over and make it look like we're going to set a new low. So maybe this might roll over, come back down to about here before we start to make our way up. Maybe we'll have to wait and see. But again, I'm not sold that you won't still be able to snipe some, snipe some Bitcoin down around $54,000 in this coming weekend. No guarantees in life, but get your buy orders in. Uh, and again, find some, you know, positions. I definitely think sort of down around about here, 55,000 would be a good place. Again, down here, sort of 54 and a half ish thousand dollars would be another good place to set buy orders. And look, if they don't happen, then they don't happen because that's a good thing though, because it means hopefully Bitcoin's going up. But if they do happen, then you've bought Bitcoin way cheaper than the basically $70,000 that it was once worth. You're buying Bitcoin at a $20,000, I'm sorry, a $10,000, 10 not percent, $10,000 discount. So whenever you want to buy something, you don't want to be buying it at all time highs, if you can avoid it. Sometimes you've got no choice. But that's just the way it goes. But that's all I look at is I'm buying Bitcoin at a discount now. Anything that's not at an all time high that I like and have done some research on, I'd rather buy it at a discount. And what is the discount? What are we looking at? That's still nearly a 20%, 17% discount you're buying Bitcoin at. So for me, that seems pretty good. Again, never financial advice. You do you and work it out. But I'm just thinking that this may roll over again 
for one more solar low and come down to that fifty-four-ish thousand dollar mark. Again, maybe even fifty-two, fifty-three thousand. We'll have to wait and see. All right, some stories I want to focus on because there's not a lot technically going on. Again, some coins doing well, some not. One Inch Network has just raised one hundred and seventy-five million dollars uh, in a Series B uh, funding round. And look at some of the people that put their money into it: Vanek, Alameda Research, Gemini, Celsius, Nexo. Now, why are they doing it? One Inch aims to facilitate their entrance into the decentralized finance space by creating new protocols, additional utilities for the native cryptocurrency, uh, and scaling up uh, the contributor team. So, again, the big money is still coming, even though we're not seeing these massive gains and massive rises. I've said this before because the big money is here. They're not simply going to let it happen like everyone thinks it's going to happen. I don't think we're going to have this crazy December. I really don't. I'm happy to be wrong. I've got my bags packed, as I've said. I'm ready for things to go. And if it, you know, I am wrong and it does and it does pump, then I'll start to take some profits. But I just don't see it coming. I think it's going to be a slow burn. I actually think it's quite possible towards the end of December have cash ready on the side because there's probably going to be a good dump because end of year people taking profits uh, to pay their taxes. Uh, that is definitely something I'm watching out for and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a heavy correction. Now I don't think Bitcoin will ever dump more than 50% again but look I could be wrong other than some bear market but I think most times if it's down 50% from its all-time high people are going to be buying that's where they're going to start to buy in so I'm not sure we'll ever see you know sort of 80% corrections unless we get a blow off top I think we can definitely see 50% corrections just sort of randomly out of nowhere but I don't know if we'll see more without again some big blow off top you know if Bitcoin somehow manages to go to 250 300,000 I could definitely see it coming back down to roughly where it is now, 60, 70, 000, sorry, 60, 50 thousand dollars, maybe even lower. So that would be 70, sort of 80 percent corrections. But outside of blow off tops and big parabolic blow off tops, I think you're roughly looking at around about the 50 percent level is where most people would be looking to buy in. So something to keep in mind. All right, crypto.com targets US derivatives market with acquisition of Nadex and small exchange. Now, Crypto.com is really starting to make big moves uh, and they've gone and tried to bought and not tried to, they are buying CFTC regulated venues and they're looking at the derivatives market in the US. So again, looking to diversify, you know, tons of money still being spent in this space. So even if we do see some downward movement, like I said, maybe a 50% correction because people trying to sort out their taxes and that, I don't think it's over. None of the on-chain data suggests that, you know, we're at the end of a bull market. Things just haven't, don't get me wrong, they've gone up a lot in the year and a half since, you know, the big crash of everything in March last year, but we still don't have that crazy retail FOMO yet. And that is when you get the peaks. This is all just, you know, moves by the big players, the big money now, and they'll do everything to shake you out and scare you and make you think it's over. But again, with a little bit of help and advice and, you know, being able to read charts and things like that and just, you know, just keeping an eye on the market generally and, you know, looking at Google trend terms and things like that, you will have a rough idea. Now, you know, if you haven't been in the space long, you're probably not going to pick it up. But suddenly, you know, everyone will be talking about crypto, not people who are just in crypto already, because that's what we do. We talk about crypto, but just random people will be talking about crypto. You know, people you've never heard talk about crypto before will suddenly be telling you, oh, man, I got into crypto. I got into this new coin and it's doing all this crazy stuff. That's usually your indication that it's time to start taking profits. If you haven't already done so before, again, you know, you buy a coin, you know, such as Matic and it, you know, 100 X's might be a good time to take some profit. I've taken some profit from Matic uh, and uh, I plan to take more profits from Matic, but Matic is a long term hold for me. But I definitely still plan to sell some because it did a 100 X. Like, will it do another 100 X? Maybe over the next 10 or 15 years? Sure. But I don't know if it'll do another 100x in the next sort of couple of weeks to months. It could, like I said, if it plays out uh, percentage-wise and chart-wise like it has over the last 18 months, 
that means you know Matic could go to two hundred dollars. Now I'm not saying it's going to two hundred dollars. Don't rush out and say you said it's going there. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying if it plays out the same way it has the last eighteen months, then it looks like percentage wise gains. I think it was eighteen hundred percent. That pushes it basically up to two hundred and seventy something dollars. So not saying it is going to happen. Not saying it can't happen. I am saying it's unlikely that that will happen in this bull run, but I think over time, over the next 10 years, definitely possible that it could do something like that. We'll have to wait and see. All right, DeFi Exchange, one, uh, sorry, DeFi Exchange IDEX launches on Ethereum scalability solution Polygon. So Polygon, again, it was one of the movers when we went and looked at the chart. So where are we? There we go. 8% move, getting back up to that $2 mark, down from like $1.30, $1.40. Uh, it's been slowly making its way back and I was letting everyone know about it. Now again, it doesn't mean it's ready to just fully moon, but if you bought in at $1.30, $1.40, you're already up good percentages. Again, Solana making moves, Terra Luna making moves, so nice. Uh, and here we go, another partnership with Polygon. Now I've got even more Polygon news and this is why I'm so bullish on Polygon. Uh, and uh, why I'm so glad that I held, again, doesn't mean I won't take profits, but Polygon Matic's product, uh, here we go. So Polygon's Matic token is up 16% in the last 24 hours, so down a little bit now, after the crypto exchange traded product. So an ETP issuer 21 shares announced its listing, a product linked to the cryptocurrency's performance on Euronet exchanges in Paris and Amsterdam. Again, just more bullish news. This will help push the price up. Polygon at the moment is the Ethereum that everyone needs. It is super cheap. Now, it can still be cheaper. Don't get me wrong. It's not uh, as cheap as Solana. I mean, I think you're doing transactions on there literally for a cent. Polygon's not quite there, but I mean, 20 cents, uh, you know, and cheaper at times and will continue to scale. You know, Hermes and all the rest of it, their acquisition of that. And when, you know, Arbitrum and Optimism are starting to, you know, take more of the load and things like that. But Polygon, yeah, I am super bullish on it. They got over 3,000 apps down here. There's now more than 3,000 apps are on Polygon. Now, there is a word that Coinbase is going to go to NFTs. They're going to have NFTs. And there is a rumor, now it's just a rumor, that they are going to do that on Polygon for the low gas fees. So still Ethereum, but on a layer two solution. Now I think that will really push Polygon's price right up if that happens. And again, that's just a rumor at the moment, not confirmed, but so many things continue to happen with Matic. Uh, I'm so bullish on this project uh, and I'm glad that I you know, stuck with it, got myself a decent sized bag, not an amazing sized bag, not enough to retire on or anything like that. Maybe in 10 years time, different story if it, really did go to something like $200, then I really would be laughing. But yeah, great project, super bullish on it. I really like it. You know, you can stake on it. It's super cheap. It's super fast. So yeah. All right, FTX. Now they are opening up trading uh, for CryptoPunks, Bored Apes, and other Ethereum NFTs. So they were really Solana-based. That was, you know, their kind of thing. But now they're even moving to uh, Ethereum. Now it'll be interesting to see what happens if all of a sudden they start to use some kind of layer two option like Polygon, which is something that they may look into. Again, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to start a rumor there but just Polygon really is the epitome of what we need Ethereum to be. I think Ethereum 2.0 rolls out uh, and eventually, you know, Ethereum 2.0 becomes uh, cheap to use. But what we need to remember is 2.0, it won't mean Polygon and everything else is suddenly dead. Ethereum will never be big enough to fully scale all, but well, I won't say never, but that's why it's going into sharding and having different layer twos, optimism and ZK rollups and, you know, all that kind of stuff. That is what it's about. And imagine FTX also then suddenly start to use something like Polygon or Arbitrum or Optimism, whatever it may be. Polygon's really where the NFT space is at at the moment on the uh, sort of Ethereum, on the cheap layer too. So something to keep an eye out for, but interesting that FTX are now 
moving away from basically being Solana based and they are now using Ethereum as well. All right, last but not least, Fidelity are finally, not finally, but they are launching over in Canada a Bitcoin, a spot Bitcoin ETF. So, you know, we can't get these done in America at the moment, but it's only a matter of time and big companies are finding their ways around it. If the US won't let it happen, Australia's doing it, Canada's doing it, other countries are doing it. And these really will start to buy up, you know, the Bitcoin that is being, you know, left on exchanges. Because again, it's a spot Bitcoin ETF. While the price may be going down and sideways at the moment, this is big players getting themselves ready. And again, they're offering all this stuff to basically institutional investors at the moment and accredited investors at the moment. It's not that mum and you know dad joe pop whatever that saying is i can't remember it off the top of my head can't go and buy it but the just the the that mass adoption you know big retail craze is not here yet and that's the scary part we still may be about sort of five years to ten years away from you know that i think you know probably more than five years but definitely over the next five to ten years i think that's when you're going to see bitcoin hit that million dollar mark i don't think it's going to happen you know within the next five years but maybe five to ten would not be surprised never financial advice all right again a couple of interesting stories that i thought and i liked anyway and you know i'm gonna report on things that i find interesting so it's just to get you know keep people you know, anyone who watches my channel keep you up to date with the things that I see interesting and where I see the market and trust me when I think it's time to start selling I will let you know uh, you know you've still got to do you and it's only going to be my personal opinion again never financial advice but I don't think we're there yet I'm not expecting an explosive December I'm not saying we can't see any gains I think it's quite possible we see some gains but I also am very mindful that we're it's possible that there's a a good size correction come in December because people do take profits and to pay their taxes. So just something to keep in mind. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. I hope you're on that game train and I'll see you next time.